Hey second graders, we have five chapters left of Wayside School Beneath the Cloud of Doom, book number four. Let's get started. This one's chapter 26, The Ultimate Ultimate Test. Yes, that's two ultimates. The word ultimate has two meanings. It could mean final or it could mean most important. The stairway quiz was both. It was the final event of the third day and it counted double. The students were worn out before they started. They had already had the science crawl, right and left handwriting, animal imitations, upside down singing, and blindfolding, blindfolded smelling. The stairway quiz would require knowledge, stamina, and most important, speed. This was Dee Dee's special talent. Dee Dee was a fa pretty fast runner on flat ground, but she was even faster going up and down stairs. That was because her left leg was a little bit shorter than her right leg. Or maybe it was the other way around. Either way, it gave her an obvious advantage. Louis, the art teacher, stood next to the bottom step. On your mark, he called out. Get set! Louis blew the whistle. The children rushed past him, knees bumping and elbows flailing. Dee Dee started way back in the pack. But beside her uneven legs, she had another advantage. She was skinny and short. She could squeeze past the slower kids ahead of her. And they were all slower than Dee Dee. As she neared the third floor, only Damien remained ahead of her. A man with a black mustache was waiting on the landing. How many quarts in a gallon? he asked Damien. Eight, said Damien. Damien was sent back down to the first sent back down to the first floor. Name a city in England. Name a city in England, he said to Dee Dee. London, Dee Dee shouted, then continued on up. Dr. Pickle was waiting on the fourth floor. Are are dreams real? he asked. Dee Dee was stumped. She could hear other kids charging up the stairs behind her. She hated to have to go back down. They're real dreams, she said. Dr. Pickle rubbed his beard. Very interesting, he answered and let her pass. By the time she reached the ninth floor, she could only hear distant footsteps behind her. What do you call someone who worries? Who, what do you call, what do you call someone who writes books? Asked Mrs. Mrs. Surlaw. You don't call them, said Dee Dee. You must never interrupt a great author during her moment of inspiration. I think you said the correct answer in there somewhere, the librarian decided. On the 12th floor, the man with the mustache was waiting again. Dee Dee wondered how he had gotten ahead of her. Name the largest river in the United States. You know that. What is it? Dee Dee couldn't remember its name, but she knew how to spell it. M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. Miss Mush asked the question on the 15th floor. How many points on a fork? Dee Dee formed a picture of a fork in her mind, but when she tried to count the points, they blurred. Three, she tried. I'm sorry, Dee Dee, said Miss Mush. She didn't have to go all the, way, all the way back down to the bottom, just to the 10th. Ron was coming up the other way. Hi, Dee Dee, he greeted her. Hi, Ron, said Dee Dee. Hope you studied your forks and spoons. She reached the 10th answered another question there, then again on the 11th and 12th. Ron was coming down. Hi, Ron. Hi, Dee Dee. She reached Miss Mush a second time. What was Christopher Columbus's favorite vegetable? Asked the lunch lady. Dee Dee knew that one. Cabbage. She spent two whole nights studying the history of cabbage. When she reached the 18th floor, the man with the mustache was there again. Are zebras black with white stripes or white with black stripes? Dee Dee thought it was the same thing, but she knew that had to be wrong. The first one, she guessed. Was that white with black stripes or black with white stripes? I don't remember, said Dee Dee. Me neither, the man admitted and let her pass. A tall, thin woman asked the next question. She looked like a teacher, but Dee Dee had never seen her before. Strangely, the woman had one very long fingernail on her pinky. Please recite the alphabet backwards. Dee Dee had to close her eyes to concentrate. Z, Y, X. It took her a long time. In her mind, Dee Dee had to keep saying the alphabet forward in order to figure out the next backward letter. She could hear footsteps coming closer, and then Marisa came up alongside her. What are you stopping for, Marie? What are you stopping for? Marisa asked. Dee Dee looked around. The woman with the long fingernail was gone. C B A. She finished just in case. Just in case. Dee Dee and Marisa continued up together, reaching the twentieth floor at the same time. The mustache man was back again. How many toes does a three-toed sloth have, he asked. That had to be the easiest question yet. 
thought Dee Dee. Three, she said. Twelve, said Marisa. Dee Dee was sent back down to the fifteenth floor. Now she really had to turn on the jets. She, le she leaped around and over the other kids on the way down. And then, using her uneven legs, she practically flew up the stairs as she answered all the questions correctly. She shot past Marisa between the 28th and 29th floor, answered a question about different kinds of dirt, and then finally reached the top of the stairs where Mrs. Jules was waiting. How many points on a fork? Mrs. Jules asked. I already had that question, Dee Dee said as she took several long, deep breaths. Well, that should sound like this. I already had that question, Dee Dee said as she took several long, deep breaths. Her heart was pounding. Good, then you know the answer. Once again, Dee Dee tried to picture the fork in her mind. It was either three or four. Twelve, she declared, still confused about the sloth with its three toes and four, four feet. She trudged back down. Hi, Dee Dee, said Marisa on her way up. Dee Dee didn't say hi back. After school, only three of the unbreakables could be seen by the flagpole. Marisa was still inside the school. Photo photographers were snapping her picture, and she was being questioned by newspaper reporters from all around the world. When she finally came outside, she was carrying a dry, giant trophy. Sorry I took so long, she said. You must think you're really great. You must think you're really great, said Joy. Marisa shrugged. Well, you should, said Ron. Because you are, said Dee Dee. Marisa set down her trophy and said, You guys are the greatest friends ever. They held out their hands, locked pinkies and thumbs, and shouted, Unbreakable! Friends stick by each other when one is down. That is true. That is a true test of friendship. But sometimes it is harder to stick by a friend who is up. That is the ultimate test of friendship. How would you like a test like that? Running up and down 20, 30 flights of stairs? I would be exhausted. And then having to answer all those questions? Some seemed like trick questions.